In 1948, just three years after the end of World War II, the fully-fledged modern state of Israel was finally born, after the Declaration of Independence was signed at Independence Hall on Rothschild Boulevard, Tel Aviv. American President and 33-degree Freemason Harry Truman was the first to officially recognize Israel as a sovereign state. Most of the rest of the world soon followed. The Israeli flag was unveiled at this time as a blue version of the hexagram. Real Jews opposed this design fiercely and suggested that their flag should instead depict a menorah, pointing out that the hexagram was not even a Jewish symbol. It has come to be known as the Star of David, but it is not mentioned in the Bible at all, and was in fact only adopted in the Enlightenment based on occult ideas from the Kabbalah. Despite the protests, the Rothschilds were in control of the operation and the hexagram stayed. Now hexes are often used to place a curse on people. Remember Hitler placed hexagrams on Jews during World War II to represent that they were cursed people. It's conceivable that this hexagram may be an attempt to curse the Jews. Now here's a very important point before we finish off this third section. Many people who have studied this subject have noticed that the Rothschilds and others like them claim to be Jewish. They see how they have been the driving force behind the formation of the nation of Israel. Consequently, they have become intensely anti-Jewish or anti-Semitic, believing that the Jews are the source of the world's problems. I need to make this absolutely clear. They aren't. They really aren't. The Jews have been a huge blessing to the world, and as Christians we owe them a huge debt of gratitude. It was the Jews who faithfully recorded the words of God and preserved them in the Bible for future generations. It was through the Jews that Jesus came, our Saviour. It was Jewish apostles that spread out into the world to give us Gentiles the good news. Many of them were martyred for it. John 4.22 says that salvation comes through the Jews. Christianity is like the branches on a Jewish root. Without them, there would be no us. The Jews are still God's people. So how do we square that with these seemingly Jewish occultists behind so much evil? Well, if you've been following this study from the start, you'll be able to answer the following question. How did Satan take down God's reputation in Europe, and how did he discredit Christianity? He used fifth column tactics. He became part of the thing he wished to destroy. The Roman Catholic Church, and in particular the Jesuit order, put on a mask of Christianity and concocted evil plans under the banner of the Christian cross. That's what sickened people of God and Christianity in Europe. People saw the horrific things being done in the name of Jesus and were turned off Jesus, even though it was nothing to do with Jesus. So how would Satan look to discredit and destroy the Jews? By using the exact same fifth calling tactics, by pretending to be part of the thing he wished to destroy. Satan has no new tricks. He would use people who pretend to be Jews and who through their actions would sicken the world of them. In Revelation 2.9 we read, I know about your suffering and your poverty, but you are rich. I know the blasphemy of those opposing you. They say they are Jews, but they are not, because their synagogue belongs to Satan. In Revelation 3.9 we read, Look, I will force those who belong to Satan's synagogue, those liars who say they are Jews but are not, to come and bow down at your feet. They will acknowledge that you are the ones I love. Remember the explicit words of Theodore Herzl that it would aid their plans to stoke the fires of anti-Semitism and to have people turn on the Jews. These so-called Jews are not Jews at all, just like the Catholics were not Christians at all. They are pretending to be the thing they wish to destroy. Remember the Jesuit oath. Among the reformers to be a reformer, among the Huguenots to be a Huguenot, among the Calvinists to be a Calvinist, among the Protestants generally to be a Protestant, and even to descend so low as to become a Jew amongst the Jews. Jews and Christians are the two people groups Satan wishes to destroy because they are the only two people groups that aren't rooted in his Babylonian system. Don't listen to the lie of Satan that the Jews are the enemy. They are the root through which Christianity came. Christians have been grafted onto a Jewish vine in a sense. We owe them a debt of gratitude. When we were far from God, Jews loved us enough to bring us the message of the gospel. Now that the roles have been reversed to a certain extent, and in this time of the Gentiles, as it were, where so many Jews haven't recognized their Savior, we should love them enough to do what they did for us and bring them Jesus. Love the Jews. Don't be played by Satan's deception. 
As for the establishment of the Jewish state, God uses the plans of the wicked against them. He uses even evil intentions for good. Romans 8.28 tells us that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God. It has always been God's plan to return the Jews to Israel and was prophesied many times in the Bible through Ezekiel and Isaiah to name but two. But why have the Rothschilds been so keen to establish an Israeli state anyway? Why have they worked so hard for so long to regather the Jews back in one location? There seems to be one obvious conclusion and the more I've studied it the more this makes sense. If you gather them all in one location it's easier to destroy them. As simple as that. The occultists think they are herding the Jews like cattle into a small area so that they can wipe them off the map in one fell swoop. We already know from our study of Islam that they believe their false messiah can't come until all the Jews have been destroyed. We've already heard Albert Pike talking about a World War III to be centred on Muslims against Jews. Anyone who has read the Bible, particularly Ezekiel, knows that it prophesies a time when surrounding Arab nations along with Russia and others will one day surround Israel looking to completely annihilate it. So from all angles it seems very much like this is what the occultists are up to. However, scholars of Bible prophecy will know that when the invaders surround Israel, looking to wipe it off the map, God himself will intervene and protect the Jewish people in a spectacular and terrifying fashion. The invading army will themselves be annihilated in an awesome display of power from Almighty God. They think they are plotting the destruction of the Jews, but they are in fact digging their own graves. What they intend to do to the Jews will be done to them. The troubles in the Middle East are slowly building up to that crescendo moment as we speak. Finally, we've spent a lot of time looking at human beings during the Enlightenment section, but I want to keep re-emphasizing that they are just puppets for Satan who is behind them all. Our enemy is spiritual, not physical. In 1 John 2.18 we read, Dear children, the last hour is here. You have heard that the Antichrist is coming, and already many such Antichrists have appeared. From this we know that the last hour has come. These antichrists are all humans trying to pave the way for the antichrist, but they are all just princes of Tyre being controlled by the spiritual king of Tyre behind them.